With the Prophet وسلم, everything was perfectly set. He wasn't too tall, nor was he too short. His skin was not too light, nor was it too dark. He was azhar alone. He had a bright skin color, but at the same time, the Prophet وسلم, was not pasty white. His face was not too round, nor was it too narrow, but it was closer to being round وسلم. Now, if you're looking at the Prophet وسلم, and I want you to imagine standing in front of him the first thing you're going to do is you're going to connect with his eyes Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Umar radiallahu anha says that the Prophet Sallallahu eyes had a perfect contrast. The black was exceedingly black in his eyes and the white was exceedingly white. His eyelashes Alaihi Salatu Wasallam were so long that it looked like they naturally had kuhul, they naturally had an eyeliner on them. Oh, really? And they were always moist from his tears Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had these large curved eyebrows and they were full and they almost connected, but there was a beautiful space right between them where the light would shine. Alim al Hama, the Prophet is described as having a prominent forehead. And in his forehead, there was a vein that would only show when he became upset. As for his nose, his nose alayhi salatu wasalam, was not flat, nor was it too pointy, but the Prophet had a finely sloped nose. And Slopes. they described it as having a unique glimmer to it. So it shines in a way that when you were away from him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you might have assumed that it was larger than it actually was. But when you came close to him, you realized that it was just the shine of his nose that made it so prominent. When he opened his mouth Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you would notice his teeth and they were perfectly okay. set. Remember, he used to use the siwak at least five times a day. So his teeth Alayhi Salatu Wasallam were described as white as hailstones and they weren't clustered together. They were set in a way that there was a fine line between each of those teeth. And his mouth alayhi salatu wasalam, was wide and he's described as having a perfect articulation. His words were crisp. You could hear everything he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his voice was melodious and it had a natural echo to it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his hair just like everything echo. else is perfectly in the middle. It wasn't too straight, nor was it too curly, but instead it was wavy hair. And the Prophet Sallallahu would keep it sometimes to his earlobes. Sometimes he would let it go all the way to his shoulders Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course, in times of Hajj and Umrah, he would shave his head Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He also had a dense full beard Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu used to comb his hair and he used to comb his beard. And they were fully black, and the Sahaba counted just between 14 and 20 gray hairs in his hair and his beard Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of his death. So he's 63 and he only had a few gray hairs Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his hair and his beard. And they said when he would use oil Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you couldn't even see them. And when you could see them, they were concentrated right under his lips Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and on his sideburns Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Then you come down to his neck. And the Prophet وسلم, had an elegant long neck. They said it was like the neck of a gazelle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then you looked at his shoulders. He had broad shoulders Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was strong, strong arms Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. He had a strong chest. And even until the date of his death, his stomach never extended beyond his chest Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he maintained his weight Alaihi Salatu Wasallam and he maintained his fitness. The Prophet وسلم, was not a hairy man. So other than his hair on his head and his beard, the Prophet وسلم, did not have much hair on the rest of his body. And he had a little bit of hair on his chest and a line that naturally ran down all the way to his navel Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then you come to his limbs. And the Prophet وسلم, is described as having well-defined big limbs. So he had big bones, big hands, big feet. He had large calves Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they said that his calves were perfectly round and then he had absolutely no weight on his heels alayhi salatu wasalam. And his lower body was so strong sallallahu alayhi wasalam that he used to be able to jump on a horse and a camel and mount it with absolutely no saddle because of the strength of his lower body. Wow. And that's why you'll find subhanallah that 
Al-Hasan radiallahu ta'ala anhu is described as resembling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in his upper body, meaning his beauty. Al-Husayn radiallahu ta'ala anhu is described as resembling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in his lower body because of his strength. He was a warrior radiallahu ta'ala anhu like his grandfather sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Despite that, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that his hands and his feet were smoother than silk and water would slither right off of the hands and the feet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he had a beautiful scent alayhi salatu was salam. He would sweat perfume sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you smelled his sweat, it smelled good. And if you shook the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you would maintain the scent of his hand on your hand for days after meeting him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Really? He had the best of breath sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when you saw him from afar, his appearance would strike you. And then when he came close to you, his beauty would overwhelm you in a way that you couldn't stare at him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Bara radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Wallahi, I went out one night and I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this red garment. And it was a red hulla from Yemen, his favorite garment to wear on occasions. And he said, I have never seen a sight more beautiful than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that night. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, when I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was so perfectly set, it was as if he was molded in silver sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most famous thing about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his smile. He always was smiling sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, in sadness and happiness, he always had a smile on his face sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that idha surra, when he was happy, then his face would become even more radiant sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want you to just capture this for a moment. How is it that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled so much, yet he's also described as mutawasil al-ahzan, as always being in a state of grief, as da'im al-fikra, right. as always being in a place of deep thought. Laysa lahu raha. He never had a break sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He always was carrying so much. And this goes to the khuluq, the character that Allah talks about in the Qur'an, that some people, you would think that they're aghniya, you would think that they have absolutely nothing going on because of the way that they carry themselves. But smiling is a sadaqah, it's a charity. And with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was no man that smiled at his ummah more than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but at the same time, there was no man that wept for his ummah than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So during the day, in order to bring joy to the people, he smiled Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at them and that was from his generosity. And during the night, there was no man that would cry more than him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in front of his Lord, also to bring joy and happiness and relief to his blessed ummah. People of Islam. What does that mean? What does that sign mean? The reality is, physical appearance does matter. When you see someone with a good personality and amazing character, you love them and respect them. But when you also add physical beauty to this person, they become more complete and it becomes hmm. much harder to fault them. Hmm. Thus Allah decreed that his prophets had the best inward and outward traits. Wow. And our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the finest of them all. So how did our Prophet look? Really? I share with you the words of those men and women who saw him. And you will notice that between the lines, you read not just a description, but you read obsessive love. Look at the words of Ka'b ibn Malik, a companion who saw him. He said whenever the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would smile, his face would illuminate. His face would radiate as if it was part of the moon. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he would say, Kana nabiyu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam abiyada, ka'anna ma siga min fidda. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was white in complexion. It was almost as if Allah had fashioned him from silver. Interesting. Anas ibn Malik says, he says, I came out one night, uh, in, I came out one night that was the full moon night. And 
I looked at the moon and in the desert understand the moon is, is an awesome sight. It is smooth, it is radiant, it is clear, it is gentle. The moon was the epitome of beauty. Let me see if that is more beautiful or the prophet is more beautiful. So I went and I saw him standing afar. So I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and he said, Wallahi, he was more handsome than the moon in its entirety. Amr ibn al-As later on would say that there was nothing that was more sweeter to me, more beloved to me than to stare at the face of the Prophet ﷺ. And I could never get enough of looking at him. I never got tired. And yet, were you to ask me how he looked, I couldn't describe him. Along with this desire to stare at him, there was also this awe. Two feelings conflicting would come on the heart. The first one, you wanted to look at him. You wanted to behold the majesty of his face. And when you wanted to look up, shyness used to overtake you, so you used to look down. He was the most handsome and beautiful of men from a distance. But the sweetest and most gentle from up close. I saw a man of striking appearance. Striking. Radiant face. Hassan al Khalq, beautifully created. Lam ta'ibhu sajla, his belly wasn't protruding. Walam tuzri bihi sa'ala, nor was his head disproportionate and small. Wasimun qasim, proportionate and delicate, finely made. Fi aynayhi da'aj, in his eyes there was a contrast. The dark was immensely dark. The white was excessively white. And his eyelashes were long. His eyebrows were arced, but they were not joined. It was separated. The Prophet's hair was not in curls, nor was it straight. His hair was thick. And by the way, this thickness of hair and lusciousness of hair has been narrated by at least five different Sahaba. Kathif al-Lihya and his, uh, his, his beard is, is, is very bushy and his hair is very full. And the Prophet ﷺ would usually grow it until it went down to his earlobes. Rab'un, a man of perfect proportions. La ya'sa min tuulin wa la taqtahimuhu aynun min qisar. You did not think that he was too tall nor did you think him too short. Hmm. It was like looking at three splendid branches, but he was the most beautiful and radiant of those branches. Aisha radiallahu anha says, I was sewing with the needle. My needle dropped in the dark. I couldn't find it. I said, Ya Rasul, I can't find it. He moved his face close and I swear, out of the radiance of his face, I found my needle. And Al-Bara ibn Azib said that once I saw him wearing a red hulla. Hulla is a cloak. Ma ra'aytu ahsana minhu qat. I never saw anything more beautiful than him on that night that I saw him wearing that red hulla. I never saw anything more beautiful than that. We continue with Ali's uh, statement that uh, whoever unexpectedly saw him would stand in awe of him. In other words, just if you weren't expecting to see him, you saw him, you would just stop for a millisecond. So much reverence from his body emanating. Anas ibn Malik who served him for 10 years. You want a description? Take it from a man who served him for 10 years. He said, Mama sistu hariran wala dibajan aliyana min kafi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In my life, I have never felt any silk or brocade that was softer than the palm of the Prophet Muhammad hmm. And he said, nor did I smell a musk or a perfume more fragrant than the sweat of the Prophet In other words, his natural odor that would emanate from him. The natural odor that would emanate from him, Anas ibn Malik said, I never smelt any fragrance more sweeter than this smell. 
Ummu Sulaim, la ilaha illallah, would carry a container carrying or catching the droplets of sweat falling off the forehead of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was taking his siesta nap. He woke up and he saw her there <laughs> with a container catching the droplets as they fall from his head. He said, Ummu Sulaim, what are you doing? She said, Messenger of Allah, we take your perspiration and we mix it with our scents and it becomes the most amazing of all fragrances. <laughs> wow, really? It was the habit of the Prophet when oh. he would come out of the masjid, the children would come running to him. And so he would come to them individually and pass his fragrant hand over their faces one after the other. Look at the rahmah, look at the mercy. Jabir said, and I was waiting and it was my turn. And he passed his hand over my face. He said, I will never forget how it felt. The coolness of it, it smelt as if he had just removed his hand from the bag of a perfume seller. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Cold and subhanallah al azim scented. Scented. The Prophet was so beautiful that many people accepted Islam just by seeing his face. The most famous example was the chief rabbi of the Jews of Medina. He had no intention to learn more about Islam, he simply wanted to see what this man was all about. As soon as he saw him, he said that he knew his face cannot be the face of a liar. The physical and spiritual characteristics of the Prophet just emanated from him. Along with his perfect character, he has proved to be the greatest leader the world has seen. Muslims, to this day, love him more than they love themselves and strive to be like him, even after 1,400 years. Who else in history has earned such a praiseworthy status? If this video intrigued you, learn more about this man. I can promise you that with an open heart, the more you know, the more you will fall in love. Studying his life may end up changing yours in ways you never expected, whether you are Muslim or not.